Hey there, I'm Dr. Paul Looney. I am a psychiatrist. I'm board certified. I work in private practice. I also work at a large church overseeing counseling and recovery ministries. And I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and like the video, comment if you will. So I've always been kind of a late bloomer, but when it comes to the transgender movement, I was ahead of the curve, you might say. Of course, there have always been people who have um, struggled with their gender identity, and I was one of them. I was born in 1955. Um, I was the third of four children born to my parents. They were married in 1952, had my sister in 53, my brother in 54, me in 55, and then my younger brother in 58. So we were packed in pretty close. Um, but from the time I was tiny, I identified more with girls than guys. My younger brother will tell you he remembers me dancing around the house in a, my sister's red nightgown. Um, I played with paper dolls. I um, loved uh, dressing up and um, a lot of girly things. When I was in elementary school, I played with the girls at recess and I desperately wanted to be a girl. Thankfully, my parents had the good sense or because my dad was getting his doctorate in psychology, um, the knowledge to know that they should neither shame me for my, my um, transgender uh, struggles or uh, behaviors, but neither should they um, support them or um, foster them. And that sense of uh, being okay with myself, whether I was... Um, dressed as a girl or a boy, um, I think was very helpful for me. Um, it turns out that um, people who have gender dysphoria, who feel as if they're the opposite gender trapped in, in the, the, uh, gen the birth gender, um, those people, if they are not transitioned socially, somewhere between 60 and even close to 98% of those people will um, experience desistance. They'll stop wishing to be the opposite gender. And so that was certainly the case for me. Now, if they are transitioned socially by the age of six or seven, then um, of those kids that are transitioned socially, um, I believe the figure is 97.5% of them will still be um, dealing with that transgender identity uh, five years later. So it's very important whether or not the child experiences their dysphoria um, neglected, uh, rejected, or endorsed. And so, so this is something that is of great concern to me in our society when people are so quick to affirm a child in um, their quest to figure out their identity, to affirm them, whatever they might feel especially at an early age. Now, the reality is that even though by about the third grade, when I moved, we moved to Texas, and um, a, a boy in my class who became my best friend, Matthew Paul, um, took a liking to me. And he um, was very athletic as well as very smart and musical. And so when it came to, to recess or PE, Matthew would choose me to be on his team, even though I was pathetic athletically. I'm not kidding. I, you know, couldn't throw a ball, ran like a girl. I was really not somebody you'd want on your team, but Matthew was my friend. And that made a big difference for me. Now, as time went on, I still struggled with that feeling of being more identified with the female sex than men. And even into adulthood, um, while I uh, chose to marry and have children, I remember even well into my 30s and 40s that I would still often go to a movie and identify more with the, the female lead than the male lead. In residency, when I was uh, married and had a couple of kids already. I remember sitting in a in a group therapy session with 
um, some of my colleagues that were also residents, some men and some women. And I remember thinking how much I enjoyed being with the group. And as I, as I went around and viewed the different people around the group, what I realized is that I was more attracted to the men and, and had more admiration for the women. I was more identified with them. And of course, this identification um, and attraction dynamic fueled for me what for many years was a major struggle, and that was finding myself more attracted to men than to women. There is a certain body of literature and um, uh, psychological understanding that, that many men who are attracted to uh, their same gender are seeking to fill up in themselves that need for masculine love that some of us fail to receive as children. I think part of my struggle was that my father didn't really know how to connect with any of his children well. He had lost his father at an early age, but I think he may have found it particularly difficult to connect with me in the way that I needed to feel his love and affection. It may have been enhanced or made more difficult by the fact that I was a girly little boy. Um, at any rate, that coupled with the, the rejection that I felt from my older brother, uh, both made me feel alienated from uh, my masculinity and from other men. And I, I believe that as I grew into my sexuality, I was very strongly attracted to other men versus being sexually attracted to women. Now, God is gracious, and I'll go into that story in, in another video, but but I was able to, to find myself um, in a relationship with a woman who deeply um, stirred my heart, and I felt that attraction to her. Um, she became my wife. Her name is Terry, and we've been married for over 40 years now. And, and I, I like to tell people who struggle with same-sex attraction, especially men, that, that you don't have to be attracted to every woman on the planet. You just need to be attracted to one if you choose to pursue marriage. But in terms of the, the transgender, transgender um, sort of explosion, if you will, it was a huge uptick in children who are identifying with the um, opposite gender and going through transitioning either socially or medically. Um, it's of great concern because, of course, um, if it had been a thing when I was a, a child, and it had been celebrated it, that I had been sort of socially sanctioned, I mean, socially um, uh, promoted in terms of my transgender uh, identity. I could easily have gone down that route, and for me, that would have been a, a very sad thing because I do think, for one thing, I wouldn't have been very attractive as a woman. <laughs> but I'm very grateful now to be a man, particularly in my my practice of psychiatry, having what I like to think is sort of a, sort of a girly brain um, gives me the advantage of being able to, um, to identify not only with the men that I work with, but also the women who come to me as clients. And when I work with a couple, I think it makes it easier for me to be that translator between man speak and uh, female jargon because I have both of those things going on in my brain and in my body I also feel some of the same uh, tensions and struggles that other men do as well as feeling that connection with the female sex or you know, the feminine gender. So you know if you are if you're watching this and you are one of those people that doesn't feel completely at home in your body that you you feel like you're kind of a uh, hybrid of masculine and feminine, or perhaps you feel like you're fully feminine in a masculine body or fully masculine in a feminine body, um, I just want to encourage you to consider the possibility that being that um, exotic mix of masculine and feminine may be a gift. It may be something that God deliberately gave to you and to me to allow us to be um, examples of, of sort of that that what I would say, like that, the far end of the spectrum in, in 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 the garden that I tend at my house. It's the exotic plants that I 
give the most care to and, and enjoy the most because they are um, out of the ordinary. They're unique. They're special. And yes, they do require special attention from me, but I don't mind giving it because of the pleasure they give me. And just want to encourage you to, to consider the possibility that if you are like me and outside the norm, um, maybe you give God special pleasure and he gives you special attention. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to trust God, that he knows what he's doing. And although I wrestled mightily with him about my gender and about my sexuality, um, arguing vehemently with him about his mistake, um, I eventually came to a place of peace and trust where I really do honestly feel grateful for the way I'm wired, even though it's inconvenient at times, even though it's difficult to manage at times, I really uh, do feel that God has blessed me in some very unique ways that um, equip me to be able to minister, to enjoy life in ways that other people may not be able to. hope this video has been helpful. Um, if you know someone who's who's feeling out of, out of um, sync with their gender, um, please be patient with them and um, help them to talk through what they're feeling and to examine their possibilities. We don't, any of us, we don't need to feel trapped, but we also don't need to feel um, that anything is possible because there are some choices that really do end up with um, grave limitations. And I think that there, there are some, um, some decisions that you can't recover from. And of course, when people do transition, depending on the, the extent of the transitioning, it can alter their body in a way that, that cannot be reversed, which um, is, is sobering. We want to make sure that we've, we've really taken a look at the ramifications and made a choice that we believe honors our own soul, honors the people around us, and of, of course, above all, honors God as the final authority in our lives. I love you. Please like, follow, subscribe.